Greetings friends, Stephen Easterbrook here, a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we're looking at um, the parable of the sower, or a parable to explain parables. So, let's read the passage. Uh, it's from Mark chapter 4. You can hear my cat scratching in the background. There we go. <laughs> uh, Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 20. Again he began to teach beside the sea, and a very large crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole crowd was beside the sea and on the land, and he was teaching them many things, things in parables. And in this teaching he said to them, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil. And immediately it sprang up, since it had no depth of, of soil. And when the sun arose, it was scorched, and since there had been no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into good soil, and produced grain growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. And he said, He who has ears, let him hear. And when he was alone, those around him, with the twelve, asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see, but not perceive, and may indeed hear, but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. He said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? He's saying this because this parable explains all the rest of them and how to read them. The sower, the, the sower sows the word, and these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. They, when they hear Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And uh, these are the ones sown on rocky ground. The ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And when they have no roots in themselves, but endure it for a while, then when tribulation or persecution arises accounts of the word, immediately they fall away. And others, the ones sown among thorns, they are those who hear the word, um, but the cares of the world and deceitfulness and of the riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown on good soil are the ones who bear or hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. Here's the reading for today. So, well, that's quite a, quite a story that Jesus is telling. Um, what does it mean? What does it mean? Well, we're going to get into that at some point as we go through, um, I wanted to give you today uh, that may we grow deeper into the knowledge of him and the joy deepening in our hearts as the spirits move, as the spirit moves. Jesus in verse 1, we find him doing what he is always doing, not not doing miracles, not healing the sick, not, not doing magic tricks or, you know, healings. 
He's teaching about the kingdom of God. He does it earlier in Mark 1 verse 15. He says, repent for the kingdom of God is in your midst, um, meaning the king is in their midst. And he's doing the same thing here, teaching the kingdom of God because the king is amidst them, in their midst. <clears throat> he's among them. And as he teaches, he finds himself in between a rock and a hard place, or more likely a crowd, which is right, and the ocean or the Sea of Galilee. So what he does is he gets into a, a boat. I don't know if anyone else was there, but uh, in this passage, we don't have that information. And he's pushed off a little bit out and he continues to teach them about the kingdom and he uses parables. Um, it's a lovely picture. I mean, it wasn't the first Bible, children's Bible I had when I was little. It was Jesus out on the boat from the crowds. And he continues to teach from there. And uh, we'll talk about parables in just a second, but he, he gives those in his company this kind of, almost a, like a riddle, I guess, um, to solve that how... Are we to understand the parable? Well, it's not that, by the way. Um, the imagery is powerful, as we see a, um, a sower sowing seeds, and then the birds come down and snatch it away. Um, we've got uh, growing up into these shadowy thorns, in a sense. You know, you can picture these things as because they're using he's using normal language. But the thing about parables are. What are parables? They're not allegorical stories. They're not like fables, like Aesop's fables with a moral in them. They don't have morals to these stories. They're not moralistic tales. So what are they? They're not fiction in the sense that we normally have fiction because there's kind of like an, a normalness to them. So what are they? Well, they are stories told normally by rabbis, uh, particularly Jesus because he's teaching on one thing, the kingdom of God. And um, they're simply everyday activities to teach us something about um, his kingdom. So a parable too is a lesson in understanding parables. It's about the kingdom of God. And with that, we can sort of see what's actually happening. I'm gonna jump right ahead to verse 10 as we look at this. His disciples come to him and they ask him about the parable that they didn't understand. <clears throat> and he says something quite profound. He says, you have been given the secret of the kingdom of God. And that's something quite amazing. Uh, we know through that through all the Old Testament, we have the sense of gaining knowledge of God and his revelation in the world. Christ is the full revelation of, of, of the God, of the Old Testament and the New. Um, it's a Trinitarian thing. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, not different beings. Um, well, they are different beings, uh, different persons, and one, one God. He says, you have been given the kingdom of God, the secret. <clears throat> but those outside, and he quotes Isaiah 6, that they may indeed see but not perceive or understand. Keep that in your mind. That they may indeed hear but not understand. Again, lest they should turn and be forgiven. So they kept in ignorance, right? Verse 13, he says, do you not understand? Remember these words, they're repeated over and over. This parable, if you do not understand this parable, how will you understand other parables? I've got a bit of a uh, sore throat, but let's continue. So if you're hearing me a bit... <laughs> So he goes from here to explain the parable. 
And that's where we get into things today. Let's point out that uh, the disciples, once again, came to Jesus and asked about this peril, and Jesus explains it, which is why the soil that um, this, this over here, he explains it, which is why he said, you have been given the secrets of the kingdom of God. And he begins with the sower, talking about the sower. Who is the sower? Well, it's, 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 it's the shepherd, it's the great shepherd, it is God, it is the worker. Um, it is all these things, really. <clears throat> but it's not the focal point of the story, it's not the message. If you start focusing on the little details and trying to imbue them with meaning, you're going to miss it. So let's keep going. Jesus begins with the sower, bringing the word of God. That's the seed. <clears throat> okay, very simple. The first lands on the hard road. And it's not growing because it's hard. The birds come down and snatch it up. And he says, Satan snatches it from your heart. The understanding of the parable is only truly possible by coming to Jesus and asking him to teach you. So we've seen the first road. You hear the message, but instead of trusting in Jesus, that message is taken away from you, eaten by the birds or Satan. And the hard heart road remains hardened. You know, many people hear the message and outright reject it. They do not ask, like the disciples, the meaning. For them, it was always just an entertaining story. So, jumping across, let's go back to this rocky ground. I want to step back for a moment. The rocky ground. If you've heard what Jesus did for you, but you're all excited and... Um, you fall, the soil falls on the rocky ground and it's excited. It, it seems to be on fire for the Lord Jesus. It's all the very charismatic in the way that it's charisma. Um, and then persecution comes. The difficult things come in life. And you lose your faith in this rocky ground because the root, it has no root. And the scorching sun comes the next day. Persecution, hardship chokes this one out. The thorny soil <clears throat> is similar to the last. Uh, the word now falls into good soil, but it doesn't fall into good soil on its own. It's in there with weeds and thorns. And these thorn trees, they grow up high, blocking the light, and they choke uh, the word. So it cannot grow. These are, uh, they, well, they, they block the light for the word to grow. So we've spoken about that. But Jesus says, um, the cares and worries of today are what do then. It's more materialism basis. It's stuff. Like, I want what they have. And you never have, an, you never have enough of it. So... <clears throat> As we look at this, who are we? Are we, are, are we any of these people? <clears throat> Did you just ignore the message of Christ and the gospel as it was not for you? Are you excited but then neglect the glory of God when difficult times occur? Do you love things or gifts, pleasure, more than your eternity with Jesus? If you do, and you are convicted in your heart, if you do, here is how you can find getting right with God. Because the Savior throws the seed into the good soil, and here it grows. 
and grows producing a crop with a very high yield. Trust in Jesus. I'll talk about that more at the end. Jesus explains that those who hear the word and accept it will bear fruit at 30, 60, 100 fold. He has plans for you. That's what the fruit is going to come out in. If you are a believer, if you are not, however, God has a plan to make you alive. He has a plan for your life and for your work. And it may have persecution in it. It probably will. It's not going to be an easy walk. But those works are not for salvation. To earn that, that has already been given by His grace and His mercy. We are commanded in many places that the word where we are told to bear fruit. And fruit is a biblical term that just talks about results. Results. So, we close with a few thoughts. Not in this message today or in this passage, but a few verses down from the paragraph to teach, para to teach parables. Chapter 4, verse 25. For the one who has more shall be given, and for the one that has not, even what he has will be taken away. What is that? Because in this parable, why am I going there? It was not only the good soil that produced, but the others did not. So it was only the good soil that produced, but the others didn't. Okay? So what is given? What is taken here? What is it? What should be? Jesus is not talking of innocence being given and taken. He's not talking of salvation being given or taken. He's not talking of anything except this one thing. Remember those words that I pointed out earlier? Understanding. Understanding. So to understand the par parables, we must go to Jesus and ask for him to teach you, to teach us. You know, if it's not with, if it's not with, if not without him, we're lost, we would really be messed up. How will we understand the parables as Jesus says here, if we do not go to him and ask him to help us in knowing him more through the parables? Those who will not come to Christ doesn't mean that we don't pray for them but they're not believers. They harden their hearts, but it is God who prepares the soil. Let us trust him, he is faithful. I'll say it again in a moment. It is he who opens the word to your heart. That's a way that he does it. Here is the secret of the kingdom of God, that his mercy, his grace, and his love are there, his justice, his goodness, his power. We who are nothing in his sight, and yet he loves you. What we, what is this secret of the kingdom of God? Is knowing that we rely on him as an infant relies on their parents to keep them alive. We go to Jesus for understanding. It's the secret of the kingdom of God that we need him to be able to understand. We need him to live and breathe and move. It's Christ. It's all Christ. Well, if you don't see this, you may miss it forever. If you don't take this, Right now, you may miss it forever and have no understanding of him. But God wants to save you. He really does. So talk to him. He's alive. Read the word. Pray. Remember I said you can trust him? Why? 
The whole Bible shows us Him. If you know, if you, if you have faith in Him. In Revelation, the last book of the Bible, when Jesus returns, this may not be an actual thing, it might be symbolic. He has a tattoo on his leg, on his thigh, I believe. And it is faithful and true, his name. His character and his name are joined together as one. So, understanding the parable of the sower means coming to Jesus to understand the meaning of the sower. There are many soils, but God prepares the soil for the word that you might know him and enter into a glorious relationship of love, peace, and potentially the salvation of many souls. According to his will and glory, I bid you a good, good night and a good morning where, if, where there is one. Um, Praise the Lord. Uh, let's pray. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for the parables that you gave us. They are really something. And we could easily go down the wrong path of allegory and fable. But we want to learn from you. So we trust in you. Whatever we are all going through in this world right now with all the struggles, we pray that you would comfort your people and draw those who are lost toward yourself and that we would all as believers be ready to help them to know you and to love you in jesus name amen goodbye my dear friends